is another curious point of mine. On the return of serve in the backhand, can we have the same short backswing on both? The return and the ground stroke. This is from the challenger. I don't know who this guy is. But uh, he did really want the features. And it's good to see it at 220 frames per second. You can see a frame actually twirling his hand a little bit on the, re on the return. Beautiful follow through to the shot. God, I love 220 frames per second. Now, are the back wings shorter on the return compared to the ground stroke? So what we'll do, we'll take a look at the different strokes. As always, I like the women's strokes because they're normally technically more sound than the men's strokes. I don't like this step back return thing. That was an interesting point. Pretty big back swing on the return. Look at the shoulders and the hips. It's a pretty open stance. Racket starts kind of high up. But she stepped back which gives your point a lot more time, even if you hit the ball significantly harder. Because you step back. Now let's look at the ground stroke. It is a runner. We do have more of a turn here. Rackets a little farther back. She turns her shoulders more along with her hips. It is a running backhand though. And I I would tell this girl you need to get some bye weight coming forward <laughs> because all her bye weight is going to the side. But let's see the rest of the stroke as she comes around it. There's no foot plant, there's no push off into the court. She does have a big backswing and a follow through and she leans over a lot. So I don't really like this backhand but I like to just as a starting point to compare the return serve backswing and the ground should return. So I think it might be a swing thing, a time thing, how much time you have on the return. And I'd much rather prefer a move in on the return, but you gotta have good timing. This is the normal return I, I teach everyone and most people have. The step in, split step, read the serve, 220 frames per second. Beautiful baby. Look at the racket kind of move around in his hand. So now we have a back swing. Really short, close to the body, it's a short turn. The racket didn't start up, it just went straight back. Close to the body, turn the body completely. Is there a step forward into the shot? You want to see a step forward to transfer weight. There's a step forward with the weight coming forward. Beautiful shot. I like to do it on 20 frames for a second because you really see things slowly and see the frame makes impact and kind of bends around in his hand a little. That's interesting. Comparing this shot to the return serve, we do see the racket starts a little higher up, a little farther back, much bigger step. Track for all your way forward. Rack still kind of bobbles in his hand a little bit. Boy, might need a stiffer frame. He has significantly bigger backswing with a shorter turn, shoulders and hips are all aligned. Then comes to this shot, extends the racket really far out there, away from his body. So that running backhand was much bigger on the return, like the backswing. So that return is significantly larger. Let's take a look at the one-handed backhand. One-handers are intrinsically different. You have much more, the shoulders are rotate as much, uh, that he steps in and gets his body weight going forward. Let's compare the backswing. You can see the grip change right there. Watch his left hand. There's a grip change. Look at the shoulder, it just locks out there. So you get a good turn. Note the height in the racket. Watch the racket angle right there. 
doesn't go quite as far back in return. Puts his weight on that left foot for the push off into the court. Points the butt cap to the target. Trying to come up on the ball, bring your body weight forward. Shoulders are loaded already. And he'll make impact with his one hand and push out to the contact point. There. Big follow through. Then when he gets to the course to rally, his return. And in the course of the rally, he gets another backhand. Slightly bigger turn, right? It starts higher. You can really notice it right here. Look at the feet. His back foot set there, so push forward in the shot. Right, it starts high. Hips and shoulders are lined up. He's gonna push forward. He's gonna take a little bit of a bigger turn right there. His shoulders, racket gets a little bit farther back. And then he got a higher back swing the shot. Look at the alignment. That's how straight his back is compared to that girl. And then the weight will come off the back foot to the front foot. The shoulders will rotate. The arm will extend through the shot. Got more turn. Look at the hips and shoulders all stay in line. Back is straight. Weight coming over that front foot. He's gonna lock into the shot. Extend the arm to the shot with a one-handed backhand. Beautiful follow through. Really hard to hit open stance with a one hand backhand too. Now the back swing it seems is to be a function of how much time you have. If you have more time, you have bigger back swing. And also it seems like the returns are lower preparation, not higher preparation. The ground stroke seems to be higher preparation, so you can start the racket high and bring the racket down and forward, which gives you momentum on your racket head and allows you to transfer a lot of weight going forward into the court. Also, the, the rallying ground strokes allow you to step into the ball more because you have more time. On the return, it's quite difficult sometimes to step in. This does a good job, but this is a second serve. Now look at the prep. He's a tall guy, and this look at the impact point. He stepped in the court, ball kicks up, and he has high prep on this one. I would say this guy's about 6'5", 190 maybe, centimeters tall. Same concept, right? You plant your, foot, you plant your feet, you push weight forward into the court. There's a grip change, high prep. It has a, he has a rather big bathroom, but look at the short turn and hips. Not too big a short turn hips, but he is on the deuce side. And the angles don't allow you for big turn in your hips if you hit the ball back to the opponent. I think for the return and the ground strokes, it really is a function of what you can do. Since he moved in, the return is a little bit shorter and starts high and goes low. It's almost like a normal ground stroke. Ball comes in deep. I like his Michael Jordan action here with his, with his tongue. Get his part on his back leg. It's all set to push off and push into the court. Racket starts high, but it's actually closer to his body. But it's good, got a good racket turn, good shoulder turn. You'll see the transfer weight coming forward. The racket's farther back, and he has a bigger turn. More legs involved too in the ground stroke. Because the idea too is like, you get more time, you gotta try to put more into the ball so you can really hurt your opponent. Great rotation and the follow through. We came forward on this shot. Comparing it to this backhand, shorter actually. Of course, much faster too though. There's the prep. There's the high prep. There's the big load in the back foot coming into the court. Good short turn in the shot. I like the follow through in the shot. Stays really low, gonna push it to the shot. Drop the frame. Start pushing through the shot with the follow through in the racket Fred. Watch the frame on the, on the impact point. Very clean follow through and the legs come out. Really flat too. I don't have any return footage on him. Now, open stance on the last one, but the key is to transfer your weight back forward. Once you transfer your weight back forward, you're in good shape. 
This one's a good sequence because you see three backhands in a row. Two cross courts and one down the line. So we're looking at the cross court first. Now if you're given time, bigger backswing, load the frame, get all your body weight coming forward like you lean against the wall, knees are bent, you notice his hip and shoulders, his shoulders are actually turned a little bit more than his hips. And the coils right through the shot. Shoulders and hips rotate together along with the arms. There's a weight transfer right there, plant the foot, get the feet together, and then just step into court. Now compare it to the, the down the line. The keys are still the same. You got time, you get big backswing, load the feet. And transfer weight so unlike the return of serve there's no time to return if you're given time you're going to have more transfer watch the feet he plants there but he actually takes another step but i like how he turns his body and moves that way towards the court turns his body steps to the court plants that foot starts to step in feet together butt cap to the ball Shoulders and hips are lined up. Record starts high. Transfer all the way in right there, and bam. Beautiful down the line. The way coming forward, plant the front foot. Let your body rotate around the shot. Have your arms extend to your target. Ideally, it's, it's all about time on the return of serve or the ground stroke. The difference between ground, return ground stroke is time. Given time, you take it back farther, you transfer weight, you load your shoulders a little bit more. I have a theory that if you can get your return of serve, the concept very close to your ground stroke, so that you have less of backswing, there's less of variables. But the reality is, I think that you have to get, if you got a chance to really load in a shot, you take the load, you get the racket farther back, you get the by weights further back, you get a bigger step into the ball. And that's the difference between your return and ground stroke. It's about how much time you have. Playing bad luck. 